or you can really take a note of whether it's happening or not. Now we are going to get into why do I need to prioritize this thing called mental health during this time? How does it matter? I am doing everything the gynecologist told me, prenatal medication, exercise, food, yeah, rest also. So how does it matter how I feel emotionally? I'm letting you know, my dear friends, it really does. Um, it There is a definite connection between your mental health and your physical health. And of course, this period of time for yourself. Um, and your parenting. What exactly happens because of how um, emotional well-being is critical? You'll why when you pay attention to it, you'll be able to manage the balance of hormones. You'll be able to be resilient to stress. Stress is okay; it happens. It's part of, part of life. But am I able to come out of it after some time? Then, of course, uh, your ability to have smooth transition into this new identity called motherhood. And it will also uh, benefit your parenting. It will have a positive impact on parent, on your partner relationship as well. And paying attention to what's happening with your mental health, like I already mentioned, you will be able to identify if this has happened before. And now you realize it because we're talking about it. In the past few years, many years, we don't really talk about it enough. So we don't realize that this is something I'm going through. But now you're identifying it. So now you'll be able to make sure that it doesn't occur or be able to manage, manage it better if it does occur. Your baby really does feel what you feel because you are both connected during pregnancy and even after giving birth, there is definitely a connection between the parent and baby, right? Um, it's important to note that prenatal stress can affect the outcome of the birth or can affect your whole experience of childbirth. So better to pay attention to it before going into labor. Attachment and bonding, uh, bonding has a positive, if, a positive outcome. If you are paying attention and prioritizing your mental health, you'll be able to model healthy emotions for your baby from the beginning um, itself. And of course, setting proper fi family dynamics in this new uh, system of family that you have created after giving birth. Okay, so that is the importance of why we should get into mental health. Next, next let, let's um, go into these factors that we just talked about. What exactly happens? What do I experience when we talk about mood changes, body image, sleep, etc.? Okay, so when it comes to mood changes during this perinatal um, time for you, first is hormonal changes. During pregnancy, the, the levels of hormones that are happening inside of you, like estrogen and progesterone, they increase significantly. And these hormones are very essential for maintaining uh, your pregnancy, but it can also affect your mood and emotions and the regulation of your emotions. That's before you give birth. Now, after childbirth, these hormones, they drop quite rapidly. And that drop also can affect your, your moods and um, your emotional sensitivity. Right? So that is something to note. Next, in terms of mood changes, the physical changes that you experience, there can be discomforts of, of pregnancy, the usual discomfort of pregnancy, like nausea, fatigue, um, the back pain, how you truly feel about your body changing, all of this can affect your mood. And this is where the support from your partner and family plays a huge role. Next important factor is the psychological and social aspects. So the idea of becoming a parent and this change in identity and um, concerns about parenting skills can all contribute to mood swings, feeling anxious during pregnancy. And postpartum, these concerns can intensify with this new responsibility of caring for a newborn, which can be overwhelming and contribute to feeling inadequate or wondering if I'm doing enough. So that's what happens in terms of your psychology with these mood changes. The next thing to keep, um, keep an eye on during this perinatal mental health is your body image. What do I mean by body image? What? How do you truly feel about the way you look or this new way that you look? And self-esteem is how you feel about yourself. 
what are the thoughts and feelings that are happening regarding your body and yourself? Acceptance. Do I love my body? Now, three ways to look at it. Do I really love my body? Do I feel neutral about it? Or do I dislike it completely? Out of these three, where am I? Keep a check on that and maybe kind of reassure yourself or say positive things to yourself about how you feel about your body, about the fact that it looks the way it is because of who you are and because you are carrying this um, human being inside of you, right? The next thing is to show compassion. Am I being compassionate to myself? Am I saying things like, yeah, I'm going to take time to bounce back or the fact that I just cannot look this way? Where am I? Positive or negative? Or is it I need to do everything for the baby? Or can I take help and do my part as well? Is there compassion in all of these thoughts? The next is motivation. Do I feel like giving up on myself? Or I will learn as I go ahead in this new journey. Just as we all do with anything that we try out for the first time. Right? It's a journey. We don't know everything at the beginning. But as we go through it, we will come to learn how to do it and what to do and what not to do. So am I feeling motivated about that? And lastly, patience. Uh, am I being patient with myself, my new parenting, my partner, our parenting together? And of course, me bouncing back to how I looked and felt before giving birth. All of this takes time. Am I being patient with it? So that is in terms of our body image and self-esteem. Next is management of stress. Am I able to cope with all these physical, emotional and lifestyle changes? Or is it all overwhelming? The next one is noticing your sleep pattern and quality. The thing about sleep is pregnancy can bring discomfort. That makes it hard to even find a comfortable sleeping position. While postpartum period often involves waking up multiple times at night to care for the baby and to care for yourself. So the sleep deprivation that you can um, experience will affect your mood, may, maybe make you uh, more irritable. So that is something to keep an eye on. And maybe this is a good time to seek help from the circle that you have around. The next one, very important, bonding and attachment. There are certain things that can be done to ensure um, uh, uh, ensure good bonding with your baby. First is skin-to-skin -skin contact, having your baby on your skin directly. And breastfeeding, and this is something that you can have a conversation with your gynecologist about. In some cases, maybe breastfeeding is not um, the right thing to do. But have a conversation with your gynecologist or your doctor. If I'm not breastfeeding, how do I bond with my baby? And the answer to that is actually the skin-to-skin -skin contact and other quality type. Now, the support system that you have, they will be so excited about this whole thing and they'll want to take care of the baby so that you take care of yourself, which is really great. But it's equally important that you have your own quality time with your baby. Next, of course, communication of your own needs and concerns. Regarding yourself, your body, your mothering, Whatever it may be, let it out. It's never healthy to suppress or push it down um, and not talk about it. Tell your partner, tell your family, whoever you trust, or even your doctor who you feel pretty safe with. Communicate anything that, any concern or need that you have. These are all important aspects to keep in mind and keep uh, checking in on during this perinatal time for yourself. Next, let's go into a bit more detail about identifying the differences between baby blues and postpartum. And um, the important thing to notice about this, the main difference is the timing. Okay, baby blues intensity, of course, is much less than postpartum. And it happens right after uh, delivery. And it, like I said, resolves within the first two weeks. Postpartum depression often happens within the first year after childbirth or within the first three weeks also and can last or even appear suddenly uh, months later. So this timing is very important to note. The symptoms are very um, 
like look very similar but like i said you have to notice the intensity of it the similarities are definitely mood swings irritability having these anxious uh, anxiety signals um fatigue and um you know kind of wanting to isolate yourself crying quite a bit the differences are quite uh, are are a few which are postpartum depression you might have thoughts of self harm or harm in general or a complete social withdrawal to any responsibility or any function that might be happening extreme fatigue extreme feelings of worthlessness or guilt all of that comes under postpartum 